champion of the world out of Mexico City. He's here at ringside standing to take a bow, Lupe Pinto. Remember here in California, under WBC rules, this will be scored the 10 point must system. No three knockdown rule. This is a 20 foot ring. Limon, the champion, in red. Choi, the challenger, in the white trunk. Limon regained the title last May in a war against Rolando Navarrete. Two-time champion comes out with Bazooka on his waistband, wearing the red trunks. Limon is 29 years old, 46, 11, and 2 with 34 knockouts. Choi is 13 and 1 with 12 knockouts. His only defeat to Rolando Navarrete, who he had in trouble early in the fight, then he was taken out late in the fight. Al, the question I have is, Limon has been in a lot of wars. He's 29 years old. Perhaps he's reaching the point where he may be a little flawed. Well, it can happen at any time in a fighter's career, and you're right. His last three or four fights have been wars as the crowd picks up the chant for Bazooka Limon. At any time, he could go, and uh, Choi's the kind of puncher who could indeed uh, be the one to put him out. You heard the introduction of Cornelius Boza Edwards here at ringside, who's sitting right behind us. 
He's the number one contender, the former champion. Gets a shot at the winner of this fight. Choi opens up with a right hand to the head. And if there is a punch that's most important for Choi, it's that lead right. Lamona Southpaw, of course, the lead right, an important weapon. Another lead right by Choi. By the way, when Edwards was introduced, he took a picture of Limon. <laughs> was he telling us something? <laughs> we'll have to remember him as champion, maybe. Maybe he thinks Choi's going to win this fight. We're halfway through the opening round. All eyes on the two fighters in the ring, and of course, the third man is the referee, Richard Steele. And Lamone is a wide puncher. He does not shoot straight punches, and that leaves him open often for good straight shots, and that's why he gets hit so often. Choi with the left hand, and his partisan uh, fans react to it right away. And this Olympic Auditorium has quite a few of his fans who have come here from Korea, hoping that he can win this title. And this fight is being televised live back to South Korea. We're in the last minute of the opening round. Choi is counter-punching extremely well. Lemon really isn't into this fight yet. Well, we have to remember this often happens. Lemon often takes a beating in the early round and then comes back to wear down his opponent a little bit later. So don't be low too much by this quick throwing. Choi with a countering right hand after Lemon finally tagged him with a right hook. Less than 30 seconds to go. Choi has a wide stance. He has long arms for his size. And we can see that he's had a lot of success here in the opening round by fighting from long range. He wants to measure Lamone with the jab and then shoot the straight right hand. It's that simple. And you can see in this first round already, Lamone is often wild with his punches, and uh, they're just looping wild punches. A good opening round for the challenger. Sung Il Choi as Suzuki Limon sits on his stool, and I'm sure they're going to have some words of advice for him as uh, everybody really taking a look at Choi for the first time. He's not fought here in the United States before. What they're seeing is what uh, was advertised, a fighter with an excellent right hand, good hand speed, and very good power. And I think uh, as we look at Suzuki Limon, there may have been a couple occasions in that first round where already he was surprised at the power of that man, Sung Il Choi. Choi has gone the distance only once, uh, 10 rounds of fist in his favor in May of 1980. Some action that opening round. Otherwise, Choi has scored 12 knockouts in his 13 wins, and as I said earlier, his only defeat was to Orlando Navarrete, the former champion. But by the way, we're calling it the junior lightweight. It's also known as the super featherweight division. Today, uh, Limon 129, Choi was 130 pounds. This is round two, scheduled for 15. Well, there you see, I scored the first round for Choi, 10 to 9. He certainly did the more effective work. Again, let me remind you, often Limon starts out slow in fights. Uh, against Navaretti when he won the title back, he was way behind on the scorecards when he knocked him out uh, later in that fight. Everything Choi does is applauded by his many fans here at the Olympics. And he is fighting on Limon's turf. And much has been made of Bazooka Limon's allegedly dirty uh, tactics in the ring. Good right hand by Choi. Uh, the fact is, in his last fight against Navaretti, he fought a relatively clean fight. And, uh, you know, he's told us he'll do what it takes to win. And uh, he's even hinted that uh, if that is slightly outside the bounds of the rules, he'll do it. Choi sustaining the corner, spins away. He wants Limon in the center of the ring. He wants to fight for long range, and he just hit a glancing blow with the right hand. And the referee Richard Steele might become an important figure in this uh, fight if Limon goes to those tactics. Steele has a lot of experience. 22 title fights he's refereed, including the home uh, stinks fight. So he's a man with a lot of experience in it. Good left hand by Choi. Halfway through round number two. Choi with a right-left combination, and he is quick with those hands. Limon trying to get closer. Well, Choi is a straight, sharp puncher, and those are the kind of people that give Limon trouble, like Cornelius Bose Edwards did. Right hand lead by Choi, and he smacks him on the chin, comes up with a left hook and smacks him on the chin as well. 
So two good blows by Choi with about a minute to go in round number two. And uh, Choi is throwing darts. He doesn't miss off. Well, he had Navaretti in all kinds of trouble in the first five rounds of that fight. And Lamone, as I said, a slow starter. So this is to be expected from Choi. Ever since uh, Alexis Arguello moved up in weight and left this division, the championship has changed hands three times. Lamone, the two-time champion, defending here against Choi, who's looking sharp. to the body by Choi. Ramon continues to chase him. Right hand lead by Choi on the mark. The red lights are on. Final second, round two. Monday, connect with a trip around the... We have Sung Il Choi. 24 years old. 13 and 1, 12 knockouts. And last January in Manila, he was knocked out in the 11th round by Rolando Navarrete. He had Navarrete down early in the fight. Here's some action from round number two, and there's a right hand by Choi that really caught Lamont in the throat. And we saw Lamont lunging in and taking the right hand. That's uh, indicative of what we may see throughout this fight. We're into round three, scheduled for 15. Rafael Pazuka Lamont in the red. Chung Hill Choi in the white. And Lamone finally gets off with a left hand that caught Choi and drove him back a couple of steps. Choi was there first again with a right hand lead. There's a right hand lead to the stomach. Obviously, that's the strategy. Al, he wants to get off first before Lamone can unleash his artillery. Well, and if you make Lamone fight defensively, you've really won most of the battle because he is not the kind of fighter that fights well going backwards. And if he's thinking too much about getting hit, uh, he's got a problem because he needs to wade in, throw those wild shots, and just come at you from every angle. He's not done that so far. And Lamone does not sidestep the charge that he's a dirty fighter. And there you see him holding and hitting with the other hand. He says... I have a family, I want to be champion, and I'll do whatever it takes to win. Choi with a good counting right hand, Choi with a right left to the head of Limon. And this fight is heating up as we thought. Limon sticks his tongue out at Choi, and interesting leading up to this fight. Limon has been much more sedate and less provocative in his comments than he normally is. He is known before a fight to say some outrageous things about his opponent. That has been absent before this fight. But Choi is a cool customer. Very accurate boxer. Limon trying to intimidate here but in this round. First by holding and hitting with one hand, then sticking his tongue at him. And he brought a smile from Richard Steele's face when he stuck his tongue out. Once again, Choi with a lead right and then a left. And they were lightning punches. There's no, no question that Choi has the quicker hand speed. But it takes a lot more to win a fight especially to take a title away from a champion like Limon. Let me tell you, you can beat up Bazooka Limon for round after round, but sometime he will come back unless you put him out. Now, I've already had uh, Limon in big trouble, but uh, Bazooka came back to win the title. Pretty soon I expect to see an elbow by Limon in Choi's face or perhaps a low blow. Trying to get Choi distracted, trying to get him off his fight plan. He'll do that, as you point out, just to unnerve Choi, because Choi is uh, methodical so far in this ring. Now the right hand lead by Choi. Limon has been uh, tagging Choi in this round, but once again, the South Korean has been on the mark with several punches. Choi continues to move away from Limon's periphery of power. round four. At this point, I think Choi has established his hand speed. And Limon understands that Choi is the real thing. Yes, indeed. He has a great right hand, and already I think he has stunned Limon with power, although there we see Limon uh, sticking his tongue out. That's good, Choi. Here's some more action from that round. 
Here we see the taunting by Lamone. Well, let's see if he can do something with his fist. Round four, schedules to 15. Limon in the red, Choi in the white. Al, how do you have it scored so far? Well, I've scored all three of those first rounds for uh, Chung Il Choi. I thought he won all of them. Limon just walked into a lead right, takes another lead right, but on the throat again, not on the chin. Choi with two topping right hands, right on the chin of Limon. Notice how Choi is keeping his distance. And the South Korean is starting to drill the champion. On the outside, Bazooka Lamont is no match for Choi in terms of hand speed or uh, defense. And there we see some of the bullying tactics. And Steele gives a warning to both men, although I don't know why he was warning Choi. Watch carefully for the lead right by Choi. He's trying to offset Lamont's charge with a lead right. Classic way to fight a southpaw. And Lamone is the kind of southpaw because he fights you with such an open stance that you can even set that right hand up with a jab, which you can't always do against southpaws. Lamone misses badly with the left hand. He is a far better fighter at close range. Choi is keeping him away. Another right hand lead by Choi right on the butt and another one. Choi with another lead right hand. Three in a row. Limon sticks his tongue at Choi, and the South Korean responds with a right to the belly. This fight is almost a replay of Limon's fight against Navaretti. Almost an exact replica. Another right hand by Choi. The South Korean building up an early lead here as he challenges the WBC's junior lightweight champion, or if you will, super featherweight, Rafael Bazooka Limon. Less than a minute to go, and Limon connects. Troy comes back with two right hands. Limon has been so sluggish over these first few rounds. Now he's motioning to Troy, come ahead and hit me. Well, Young Yo Troy's happy to oblige. I think he's also saying, why don't you come inside with me? <laughs> no dice. I'm sure Lamont would like to take Choi out in the alley and beat him up, but uh, Choi's going to use all of his 20-foot range. Notice how he keeps away from the rope. A right hook by the champion. Less than 30 seconds to go in the round. Choi with all kinds of lateral movement. And now Lamont bangs the body. Choi with two right hands. Choi with another right hand, and he can sink. Seconds. You're watching Saturday night at the fight. Bra Round five at the Olympic in Los Angeles. Sal Marciano, Al Bernstein, ringside as we present to you the junior lightweight championship between the title holder, Azuka Limon, and the challenger, Chung Il Choi of South Korea. Now, over the first four, there's no doubt that Choi has established the fact that he's an expert boxer and a hard hitter. Limon doesn't like fighting him from long range and wants to get at Choi at close quarter. And even though Choi has been dominant, that the action at the end of that fourth round is an indication of the kind of fight Limon wants to lure him into. They were both flailing away wildly at each other, and it was, a, it was an alley brawl, and that's what Limon wants. Choi is actually dictating the style of this fight, and that is long range as he stays away from the ropes and keeps Limon in the center of the ring. Limon not doing a great job of cutting off the ring to yet. Well, that has never been a strong suit either, and uh, Choi is giving him a lot of lateral movement, and this is not a boxer's ring. But then again, Choi is not a boxer. He's a boxer puncher. He just wants to give you the movement, set up, and then hit you from a different angle. There's that lead right hand that missed this time, but fit his best punch. with a lead right, and uh, Bazooka Limon continues to take here. Takes another lead right to the stomach. You know, Chung Yo Choi is made for this division. The three top men, the Limon, Edwards, and Navarrete are all southpaws, and he's got that great lead right, and it almost beat Navarrete. Choi uh, changing up here, going to the body with that lead right the last two times he got off. Limon with 
the left hand Choi stays in the corner and drills him with a right and spins out and when Lamone does land a punch and starts an assault Choi does the right thing he punches back and he not just landed an excellent combination you can't let Lamone get you going backwards for any extended period of time in a fight because he will eat you alive Weiss, the champion, has stuck his tongue out at Choi. Choi's doing his talking with his fist. Final second, round five. Right hand by Choi. And Choi now has a bump on his right cheekbone. Well, watch that closely for you. It is not a cut, it is a bump. Right hand by Choi, not ready, digs a shot to the belly. We'll be back with round six. Two five rounds. Can we hazard a guess how many lead rights he has hit the camp with? 30, maybe 30, 40? At least, I would say at least that many. And uh, even though he's been so effective, I'll tell you, I will go out on a limb and say I see a subtle change coming about in this fight. That man, Bazooka Lamont, has closed the distance between himself and Choi. He's still taking punishment, but as we head into the sixth round, I think we may see him make his own kind of fight in the middle rounds of this fight. Let's see if it happens. You don't get to be champion by just taking. And Lamont has proven himself as a champion twice. Well, there's a long way to go in this one. It's the sixth round. So far, the challenger has done very well. Another lean right hand, the beginning of really a one-sided exchange of the bazooka with nothing in retaliation. Well, there's the scoring. I've got Troy Head winning all five of the first round. Hard to imagine how you could take any of those away from him. Now you can see though that Lamone has closed the distance a little bit and in my opinion if he starts flailing away with both hands he may do some good for himself. There we go to the body. And a good jab by Lamone. Right uppercut by Choi. Choi with a right hand lead and that sent back Lamone a couple of steps. We were told that Choi has perhaps the best right hand of the division and he's proving it tonight. It is a devastating weapon and only Bazooka Lamone's granite chin and he has one is preventing him from going down from any of those shots. Blood from the nose of Lamone. As Choi draws first blood, the champion now bleeding from the nostrils. We're halfway through round six. Choi with another lead right. That's put the gloves and tag the champion right on the nose. Big job in that corner. 
That's a bleeding scalp could be a nuisance with Ramon's vision. Well, the blood could certainly seep into his left eye, and it looks like that cut is just pouring blood down. That, that butt, I think, and the cut that resulted woke up Lamone a little bit, and he went to town for about, oh, 20 seconds, but then Choi was right there again with that lead right hand, and I thought uh, toward the end of that round really had Lamone hurt. Now, let's remember, Choi burns out as we take a look at some of that action from that last round. That's Choi with some precision punching. There's that good right hand, and we've seen it all night. Lamone has taken many lead right hands. His knees haven't buckled. He hasn't really been hurt. But the challenger is no question about it, outscoring the champion. We're in round seven, scheduled for 15. Remember, they'll use the 10-point must system. Lamone does some body work. Yes, they were at close quarters, and that's why he was able to succeed. But Troy is dictating the style of this fight. You know, that accidentally hits the referee with the left hand. Richard Steele has a tough job in this match, I'll tell you that much. Steele is just smiling. He took the blow, no problem. Uh, he's a former light heavyweight himself, so he's taken a few of those shots. Now, Troy must be purposeful here. He must maintain his poise and continue to fight the champion the way he has over the first six rounds. Lamone is ever dangerous, and remember, Troy burnt out against Navarati. He had him hurt, but he burnt out in the later rounds, and that was when Navarati came on and, and knocked him out. So, Troy may have some problem in going to 15-round distance. He's gone 10 rounds once. Otherwise, he has scored knockouts. That was a trick. And Bazooka Lamone was also tempted to hit Troy while he was down, but thankfully refrained. Lamone with the lead left hand, but uh, he saw Troy duck away. right hand by Choi. Blood continues to come out of the nose of the champion. Ramon chasing Choi all over the ring, repeatedly being caught with right hand lead. And Choi mixes it up with the right to the body. We're halfway through round seven. And in this round, Ramon has untracked his jab, an important weapon for him because it'll help him set up that, that looping left hand.
WBC 